So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now I've gone and created a new graph here using a custom template of mine. So you can go ahead and click up in the top right if you want to take a look at how I set that up. And I'm just going to go ahead and right click and drag this into my 3D view. So we can go ahead and actually start to visualize that in 3D. So to start this shape off, I want to go ahead and create the wire that we're going to pretty much use to put these barbed little pieces on. So to do that, like pretty much all materials we do, we're going to start with a shape node. And I'll go ahead actually and just plug this into our normal and our histogram there. And we're just going to get this pure white block. So what I want to do is define pretty much kind of just a horizontal strip that's going to run from left to right. And to do that, I'm just going to use the square pattern and I'm going to crush it down on the Y and I'm going to use a scale of about 0.01. Right. So we're just going to get something very thin like that. And really, if you can believe it or not, this is pretty much the shape that we're going to be using to drive that wire. Now, it's really not in the best format as of right now. As we can see, it's very straight and uh, not at all like the finished wire. So we're going to have to do a bit of iteration on this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of create that wavy form that we can see with the wire and kind of like how it kind of intertwines with itself. So to start that, let's go ahead and add a directional warp node. And I'll just go and shift click to steal this and plug that in. And we're going to need to drive the intensity with a grayscale input. So we're going to need some kind of random noise or some shape to really actually use this node properly. And so what I want to do initially is I want to create a bit of a bend kind of in the center here so that it's going to go straight, warp up, and then it's going to come back down. And so to do that, we're going to use another shape node. So let's go and type in shape. And for the shape, I'm going to use a paraboloid. And so hopefully you can see that, um, you know, we're going to get kind of that roundedness, right? But it's a little too big right now. And actually, let's just visualize this first. So again, we're going to want to make sure that it's going to warp up. So in our warp angle here, that's going to be 90 degrees because it starts warping left. 90 degrees is up. 180 degrees is going to be right. And 270 is going to be down. So we can see that the shape is a little too big and it's going to warp the entire thing. And if I hit spacebar in my view here, right? It's uh, just going to kind of warp it in a weird way, not the way that we want. So what we have to do is go ahead into our shape here and let's crush it down on the X. And I'm going to do about halfway. So 0.5 that we can see, right? It's going to go straight and then warp up a little bit and then straight again. Now, I think that fall off is a little too sharp in here, right? It kind of goes from being warped to very straight. So let's quickly just add a blur high quality grayscale just to help kind of soften that out a little bit. And I'll bring the quality up and I'm going to bring the intensity down to, or actually I'm going to bring it up to about 20. So really just soften it out, right? And that's going to round it out a little bit softer. So now that we've got that set up, I actually want to go ahead and bring these side pieces down so that we're going to get kind of this wave pattern. So what I'll do is add another directional warp node However, this time, remember, because we want it to go down, I'm going to change the warp angle to be 270, right? 90 degrees, 180, 270. However, we actually need some values to input into this to make sure that that's going to warp correctly. Because if we go and just plug this in here, right, it's going to take this input and then just warp it equally the same intensity in the opposite direction. So we're just going to get a straight line again. So instead, I actually need to take this and I need to kind of shove it off to the side and offset it a little bit. So I'm going to add a transformation 2D node. And let's just move it either, you know, to the, towards, the, uh, towards the right side or towards the left. It doesn't really matter as long as you go 0.5 or negative 0.5. So now you can see, right, and actually, you know what, I should just go and kind of show you what it's doing, right? As we're going from the center. And we're actually just warping it on the side there. So now it's going to be this kind of wave pattern. However, the intensity is kind of small. And so I'm going to show you kind of a nice way to work if you're going to be using a lot of like very similar values 
across different nodes, but you don't want to go ahead and just expose it as a parameter. So in the version of Substance Designer that I'm using right here, 2019.3.3 and later, there's the idea of input values. And you can see that on really any node that we click on here, so I'll do our directional warp, we have this input value slot. And we can go ahead and actually click on this little plus button. And you can see that that's gone ahead and opened up another input slot or an input value. However, this socket is going to be green. So green obviously means it's going to be intimidating, right? No, but it is, it's kind of scary, but it really isn't that scary once we understand what it's doing. So I've opened this note up to receive a different type of value, hence why it is green. In this case, it's going to be a numerical value. And we can see actually it's going to be a float one. Now, if that doesn't make really any sense to you or you don't know what a float one is, don't really have to worry about it. Just know that a float one value is a number that includes a decimal point. And so why would I want to use this particular input value here? Well, this is maybe a bit of an edge case just because there's two nodes, but say we have more than these two nodes and we want to increase them to the same number, right? Like we want to increase the intensity at equal values for both this directional up and this directional down. Well, it's kind of a pain in the butt to go ahead and click on each node and then go and scale it up and then click on the other node and make sure I scale it up to the same value. And it would be kind of nice if I could just plug in one kind of node that has this number stored in it. And then whenever I want to change these values, I can just go back to that node and change the value there. And it's going to update all of our other nodes. Now, like I said, you could just go ahead and expose this as a parameter, but then you'd have to double click on your graph and you'd have to come all the way down to your input parameters and then play around with it here. And sometimes it's just nice to have the actual node in your graph rather than trying to have to navigate all of this kind of like extra behind the scenes stuff. So what I'm going to do in my graph here is I'm going to start to type in input and you can see that we're going to have this input value node. And so when I click that, right, it's going to have that scary green socket. But really, again, all that means is that we're going to be using this to actually denote a value. And we can see that the value that this node is holding is one. And again, we can see, right, that's kind of scary float one. And we have a couple different data types, but for this particular tutorial, we're not really going to get into data types. And fortunately for us, we are going to be using a float one. So just leave it on default if you're following along. However, I want to come back to our directional warp and make sure we add another input value for that socket as well. And again, the input value names aren't entirely critical, specifically for this, you know, very easy example. But oftentimes you just want to name this something that is understandable. So because I'm going to be using this input value to basically override these intensities, I'm just going to quickly call this hash intensity. And I'll go ahead and call that the same thing for this input value. So now that I've got those named, let's go ahead and just plug this in to our input values that we've gone ahead and created. And to actually now use this value to override these, all we have to do is select our node, go up to the parameter or the property that we want to override, and click on this little drop down button. And you'll see that we now have this hash intensity, which is the input value that we've gone ahead and created. So when I select that, now it's going to disappear. And it's actually changed our value, right? Because right now we're giving it an intensity of one, but by default it was 10. So if I go and just quickly change this one as well, again, hash intensity. Now we can see it's really not doing a whole lot, but if I go ahead and change this up to say, I don't know, let's change the default to a hundred, right? Something crazy like that. Now we can see that I've gone ahead and changed both of these intensities, only having to use one node. And I'm not gonna have to double click, come down to my parameters and play around with that. So hopefully that's been useful for you. I know that it was kind of an impromptu part of this lesson because it's not super required for what we're doing, but I think input values are kind of cool and very resourceful for graphs. And so I wanted to kind of show you this on a little bit of an easy practical example. I am planning to do another tutorial specifically on these, but hopefully this little snippet gives you kind of a good idea of what they could be used for. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually change this to the appropriate value that I want. And I'm going to go to about 50. So that's going to change the intensity to 50 for both of these here. And again, if I needed to change this, I could just come back to that input value. 
So enough about input values. Let's actually take a look now at finishing out this wire piece. So we've got this kind of waveform going on here, but we need to actually make it a little bit more, uh, you know, true to form in terms of the actual kind of smooth and rounded wire aspect. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a transformation 2D node and I'll bring this out. And now in between these two here, I want to go ahead and actually add another transformation 2D node. Now we're not going to do anything yet with this, but just keep this in the back of your head for now because we're going to come back to it later. So with this second transformation 2D node, what I want to do is I want to shuffle this off to the side just a little bit. So I want to make sure that again, it's going to be either positive or negative. Doesn't really matter which direction, but we want to go 0.25 on the X. And so if we take a look now, right? What that's done is kind of just moved it off to the side here. Again, we're still getting a repeating pattern, but we've kind of got this almost like half coil shape instead, because this is going to be a lot easier to do kind of the next calculations on. So from here, let's go ahead and use a bevel node. And the bevel node is just going to help me round everything out. So I can go and make the distance really, really small, like 0.05. Again, I want to make sure that it's in the positives and not the negatives. And let's just bring the smoothing all the way up to five. So that's gone from a very, you know, sharp kind of uh, binary shape here. And we've kind of just smoothed it out a little bit. We can also go ahead and just add a little bit more smoothing. I want to do this via a blur high quality grayscale node instead of just trying to use the smoothing option in here, just to kind of help segment our workflow. So let's bring our quality up and our intensity way down to like two or something like that. I'm going to use an auto levels node as well, just to make sure that we're going from a pure black to a pure white value and not kind of just, you know, dawdling in between in this kind of mid gray. I want to make sure that I'm maximizing the range that I have to work with here. And finally, I'm going to use a levels node just to kind of sharpen out this black input. So you can see that as I bring this in just a little bit, right, it kind of sharpens that roundedness of this value here. So it's not as kind of hazy. And you're going to be able to play around with this kind of however much you want. It's going to be what you think looks good. So that's been pretty rapid and pretty quick, but you can see that we've gone from, you know, something kind of like this to something that's at least a little bit more recognizable as a smoother shape. But where do we go from here, right? So what I want to do is I actually want to kind of decrease the values of the sides here to make it look like they're being kind of like pushed in, right? Like if we're looking at this head on, those areas have kind of like recessed or they're farther away than some of the other parts, I guess, is really what I'm trying to say. And it might be a little tough to visualize now, but once we get going, it will make a lot of sense. So essentially what I want to do is just make sure that the right and the left side are decreased in their grayscale values. So a way we can do that is I'm going to add another shape node and let's just make the shape node again a square, but a size of 0.25 on the X. So you can see we've got this band down the middle that's pure white and these bands down the sides that are pure black. So in a nutshell, what we're going to do is pretty much take these black values and pretty much overlay them over top of these sides. But we need to do a little bit of iteration again on this shape node because if I go ahead and just change this to a blending mode of opacity, uh, you can see it just completely removes, you know, the right and the left side and it's pretty much useless to us at this point. So let's smooth everything out just a little bit. So again, I'm going to use a bevel node, right? Because it does a good job of giving us that kind of gradient. And so I'm going to leave this at the default values just because I wanted the gradient from left to right. And you can see that's done a little bit of a nicer job of trying to uh, kind of recess those areas, but we're not quite there. I also want to go and just make sure that we blur this out one more time, again, using a blur high quality grayscale, just to kind of soften everything up. And I'll bring our quality up to one. And now we're going to get something like this. So you can kind of see that it looks like, you know, this is kind of farther away. And as it gets closer towards the center, it looks like it's actually getting closer to us, right? Or the viewer. Now, I don't want to go ahead and just completely remove these values, right? Because 
these aren't going to connect anymore. So instead, let's just decrease the opacity of this blend mode to be about 0.75 so that now it looks like these are one continuous piece, kind of like a corkscrew, but the values on the sides are going to be a little bit darker. And now that we've got the shape pretty much completed, let's go ahead and just kind of put this all together because really with this initial shape here, we've pretty much done most of the work. So what I want to do is just drag out a transformation 2D node. And I'm also going to drag out a blend mode. And so what we can do is again, just shift click to steal this. I want to make sure that I still plug this into the transformation 2D node. And let's plug this back into the blend. So what we're going to do is use this transformation 2D node to again offset this so that it's going to actually tile up correctly here. So actually what I want to do first is I'll just show you the blending mode that we're going to use, which is going to be max lighten. And now when I go ahead and just single click this transformation 2D node, I'm going to move it off in either direction, left or right, it does not matter. Again on the X, to 0 0.5 and you can see that as I do that using the max lighten mode right it's going to find the higher or brighter pixel value and it's going to display that over top and that's why we had to go ahead and actually remove these sides here or you know darken them a little bit so that now if we take a look it looks like we've got you know kind of like this uh, like helix pattern or like this DNA structure but we're going to do a little bit of fixing with that so remember that transformation 2D node that I told you to, you know, kind of lock in the back of your head a little bit ago? That's where we're going to use this pattern here. And the reason we had to structure this here is that this is now going to actually change and alter all of these, you know, kind of pattern designs. So if I go ahead and select this, what I want to do is I want to just, again, holding down control, scale this down. So I'm going to just squish it down. So that it's a lot closer and we don't have to worry about those other patterns coming in just yet i just want to make sure that we're going to get this pretty close right so that it's going to be just kind of touching like that and so now with this transformation 2d node let's go and set this to absolute in our tiling mode under our base parameters and i want to make sure that we're only using horizontal tiling so it's only going to tile from left to right and so you can see here, right, again, holding down control, this is going to allow us to pretty much create that really, really cool kind of like spiraling pattern. Now, once I've got the initial design of this down, I can go and at our, uh, the end of our chain here, let's go and add a tile generator. You can also use a tile sampler, but I think it's a little bit of overkill for this particular pattern. We'll make sure to plug that into our top pattern socket there. And as I come down, let's change our pattern to be image input, right? So we're gonna get this little uh, wire going on. And I wanna bring the Y amount down to just one here, right? I only want it to tile once vertically, and then I'm gonna tile it twice on the X. So it's just gonna be two patterns, basically, one here and one here. And so now you can see very quickly, we've gone ahead and created a very nice wire pattern. And now if you notice that uh, you're getting a little bit of like a black line in certain areas, what you can do is go ahead to image input filtering, just go ahead and change this to bilinear and it should fix that. So now I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and in our normals here, go and change this to be something like 10, right to really sharpen that out. And this is gonna be the basis for our wire. Now let's take a look at developing the height map for the barb itself. And this one's a little bit more intricate, but it definitely is worth it because it makes the whole thing look good, right? So let's go and add a gradient linear two node. And the reason I want to use this node is pretty much like we did for the wire where we're going to have this horizontal, uh, you know, shape. But the reason I want to use this instead is because it's got this nice kind of fall off. And so that's going to really help us out from having to use too many blur nodes to kind of smooth things out. So let's go and plug this in. And what I want to do on this first is actually make it so that, you know, it's actually, you know, more horizontal than it is vertical, right? It's taking up our entire texture space. So let's go and first change our tiling mode 
to be absolute, and we only want horizontal tiling. So now what we can do is come down to this tiling parameter, and let's change this all the way up to 16. So we're going to get pretty much just a straight line like this, right? And now just like the wire, what I want to do is go ahead and decrease the values on the left and the right side. And in this case, I actually want to pretty much get rid of them because I only want this kind of center sliver. So let's go ahead and create another shape node. And we'll make sure that it's set to an X of 0 0.25 because we're going to be using pretty much the same exact uh, parameters and properties from our previous piece. And actually what you can do is if you're still working in the same graph, which I hope you are, you can just go ahead and steal these bits up here and bring them down. So that we're pretty much going to get the same exact thing here. Now what I want to do for the blur high quality grayscale is maybe bump this up to like 16 as well, just to help smooth it out. I think kind of worked for my test run. And now if I go ahead and use a, another blend node, plugging this in and switching our blending mode to be multiply, right? We're going to get something kind of like that. And so you might be thinking, okay, of what use is this to us right now? Well, this is going to be kind of like one of the initial patterns for the coil, which we're then going to go ahead and tile and kind of offset a little bit. And so let's take a look at how we're going to do that by using a tile sampler node. And so this is a little bit more intricate, so it might be a reason why we'd want to go and use the tile sampler over the tile generator. So I'll plug this into our pattern and reconnect that. And let's go ahead and make sure that we're using our pattern input. So by default, it's going to give us 16 by 16, which is not what I want, right? I only want to kind of have one pattern tiled vertically. So I'm going to make sure that our X is set to one. And I'm going to bring our Y amount down to about, uh, let's do about nine. So we're getting it tiling vertically, but we don't really have the desired look quite yet. So let's go down into our size here. Let's bring the size in on the X to about uh, 0 0.3 ish. I think looked good for my, actually let's do about, we'll do about 0.32, right? So that we're getting this kind of squished on the X. And I want to bring this up on the Y right now. You see it's very thin to about eight to kind of stretch that all out again. You can see we're kind of getting that pattern, right? Where the center is kind of, you know, closer to the viewer, but then the sides are a little bit falling off. And so that's going to give us the effect as if this is kind of like coiling around once we kind of push these together. Let's also just change the uniform scale to about two. And that's now going to bring everything up and together. And now if I'm just kind of rifling off different values for you, uh, the way I know this is I've tested this all before. So I don't just know all of this by hand, although that would be pretty impressive if I did, but I cannot claim that I do. And so now that we've got this kind of set up, Hopefully you can kind of get the look. We're going to do a little bit towards the edges in a bit here, but in our 2D view, it looks a lot better. The final thing I want to do in here is go ahead and just rotate this. So we can go and rotate this about, let's do about 15 degrees, right? Give it a bit of an offset. So now it kind of looks like it's coiling around. We're like one side here kind of coils around and comes out the other side there. However, you'll notice that this is going to tile, right? And in most instances, that's exactly what we want. But this is not most instances, right? We want this to actually be one kind of shape that we can go ahead and then kind of put on our wire wherever we want and not notice this very sharp line. So I want to go ahead and actually mask a couple of these off. And if we come down to the masking options, right, we can mask random. Well, that's not really useful. Uh, we can use a mask map. Well, we don't have anything plugged in, so it's just going to get rid of everything. So how are we going to do this, right? Well, I actually can create a very simple mask for our purposes here, because really all I want to do is I want to keep some of these in the center here, but I want to get rid of the ones closer to the edge. So I could really just use another shape node and then squish our cube in and use that as our mask. So let's create another shape. And you'll see that we have this mask map input. Let's just plug that in. 
And I'm going to come back to our tile sampler and all the way down to our mask and uh, color input here. And let's just bring this all the way up. And it's not going to do anything because our shape is a pure white. But you can see that when I go ahead and scale this down, right? Once there's some black values into the mix, it's actually going to start to erase some. And you'll notice that it's actually kind of just eating away from the outsides, right towards the center. And that's because these shapes are within this kind of mask range here. So we can set this scale to about something like, well, let's do about 0.6, right? So we're going to get only these couple in the center, but this is now going to allow us to actually create this and move it wherever we want without having to worry about tile issues. Awesome. So now that we've got that, let's take a look at actually sharpening this up and making it look nice and crisp because it does look pretty cool in our 2D view, but in our 3D view, it looks like it's just kind of, you know, dissipating into nothing, right? So we need to go and sharpen that up. So what I want to do is from our tile sampler here, I'm going to drag off a histogram scan node. And what this is going to allow me to do is basically, as the name suggests, scan through a histogram or basically scan through an image from our darkest value to our brightest value. So if we take a look and I go and bring this position all the way up to about, well, let's do about 0.95-ish. I don't want to go all the way. And then bring the contrast up all the way to one. You can see, right, we're going to pretty much essentially create what is a mask. And now I can go and use a blur high quality grayscale again to kind of just soften that out. I don't want it to be too soft though. So let's bring this back into about a value of two there. And what we can do is use this to again, blend over top of itself. So let's go ahead and add a blend and I'll just steal these connections once again so that we can see it's going to be a little bit sharper, right? but I want to go and use the blending mode of multiply so that it's going to take all of the darker values from the top input and pretty much overlay them over top of the bottom. But anything that's white is going to be visible from the bottom input here. So you can see it's going to essentially keep our, you know, nice soft coils here, but it's going to just kind of help us sharpen out these edges. And now finally, because our wire is not running vertically like this, I want to go ahead and just rotate this. So using a transformation 2D node, we can go and just hit 90 degrees. And now we've got a nice solid coil pattern that's going to be the start of our barb. So now that we have the body of the barbed wire complete, I want to go ahead and add some really sharp pieces of metal, just kind of sticking out all of the corners of this piece, right? To actually make it look like barbed wire. So I'm going to start with another shape node, surprise, surprise. And what I want to do is bring this in on the X to about 0.09. So it's going to be vertical and very thin. And I'm actually going to also bring it down vertically to about 0.6. We've got this rectangular shape just kind of floating in the center. And what I want to do is kind of make this the base shape for those little sharp pieces that we're going to blend on. So we're going to need to make this sharp, right? So let's create another shape node first. And with this, I'm going to really crush down the X again to about 0 0.16. And let's rotate this nine degrees. So it's just going to be very, very, uh, you know, off kilter basically, but still not super turned. And let's add a transformation 2D node. So I can go ahead and move this off onto the left side there, because what I want to do is mirror this so that we're basically getting a subtractor on both sides so that I can go ahead. And actually, if I just add a blend node here and we already take a look, right? Using the subtract blend mode, you can see that I'm just using this shape here to subtract from this shape. But if we go and mirror it, now it's going to be sharp. So let's go and on this transformation 2D node, add a mirror grayscale. And by default, it's going to allow us to mirror on the X axis, right? So it's going to be a nice fit for us. So now we're going to get something kind of like that. And we can really play around with the offset however we want. Although I think, you know, around this value here, 
getting something like this is going to be pretty good. Now, oftentimes we're not going to want to just work with a very binary shape like this. So yet again, let's go ahead and add a bevel node so that we can try and round this out. Now, in this particular instance, what I want to do is actually go into the negative distance here. And we can see if I kind of zoom in, right? We've got our initial shape right here. And when we use a positive value for the distance, it's going to take that shape and extrude outwards. However, if we go into negatives, it's going to take that shape and start to extrude inwards. And so for this particular you know, object, that's kind of what I want to do. So I'm going to go to about negative 0.02, something very, very light. And I'm going to bring the smoothing all the way up to 5. So now we're going to get something like this, right? Very smooth and very soft. Now, how are we going to go ahead and use this spike to stick out of all of the corners of this body piece here? Well, let's go ahead and first blend these together. So I'm going to create a blend node. Let's go and plug the body into the midground. And actually, I'll bring this all down. And let's bring these spike pieces up over top. So I want to use the spike as our top foreground piece there. And the blending mode I want to use, which we've seen before, is going to be Max Lighten. Because if we go and take a look, Max Lighten is going to allow us to essentially use the brighter values to be overlaid on top of the darker values. So it doesn't really matter which actual slot we stick these two into, as long as we know that, okay, things we want to be visible and over top of other pieces just has to be a brighter grayscale value. As well, we need to go ahead and actually manipulate these pieces to be sticking out in those correct directions. But that's going to be the easy part. So let's go and use a Transformation 2D node. And I'm also going to use a Mirror Grayscale node. So for this first Mirror Grayscale, let's go and switch the Mirror Axis mode to be Y. So that you can see it's actually going to basically cut off halfway through the center there and just mirror it over. So now looking at our blend mode here, what I can do is start to move this up and over. And I can go and rotate this, uh, maybe not quite like that, but something that's going to fit this area here. And again, I want to make sure that I line up the rotation uh, pretty well, kind of something like that. And actually, maybe where I had it was good. Yeah, that looks OK. So that we can kind of get something like that. Now, the grayscale values are going to conflict a little bit, but we're just looking at positioning right now. So I can use another grayscale uh, mirror mode, and you can see it's going to get rid of everything. And that's because right now, what this node is going to do is take anything on the left side and mirror it over to the right. Well, we only have black values, right? So it's going to mirror black values over to the right. So what we need to do is just go ahead and invert that so that now it's going to take whatever's on the right and mirror that over to the left. So you can see very quickly, right, we've gone ahead and created these spikes here. And if we want to go and rotate these or change kind of the direction, right, and the offset of these, we can do it very simply from this transformation 2D node. But now we need to actually consider how this is going to blend with the body of the barb. So let's go and add a levels node. And what I want to do is just uniformly decrease the white output. So this is going to bring the value of these guys down until we're kind of getting something that's a little bit underneath all of these pieces. And again, we can maybe play around with this if we don't quite like how it's all blending together. And so I've decided I'm going to go for something that kind of sticks maybe out through the sides there. So that we're going to get this kind of nice, almost like spiraling barbed asset. Now let's go ahead, maybe just try and consolidate all of this together a little bit better by using another blur high quality grayscale. I certainly love to abuse this particular node. And let's just bring the intensity down to one. So it's just going to soften everything out. And really, that's going to be it for this barbed piece. And now, how are we going to go ahead and actually compose this onto our wire height? 
Well, I want to do a few preliminary things first, like, you know, crunching it down and making sure that we're going to have just two patterns here that we can kind of overlay on top. So I'm going to add a transformation 2D node. And again, I want to make sure that this is not going to have any tiling. So we'll set that to absolute, no tiling. And holding down control and shift, we can just scale this down uniformly. And I'm going to bring this over on the x axis here towards the left side because I want to go ahead and use a mirror grayscale. So it's just going to take this side here and mirror it over. Now it's going to flip the bar, but for this particular asset, I don't think it really makes too much of a difference. And actually, it kind of adds a little bit of variety. So it's not just the same little piece here, you know, tiling consistently. And finally, let's go ahead and add an auto levels node to make sure that we're working in a pure zero to one or black to white uh, color space here. And now we should be able to uh, at least think about getting these composited together. Now we'll take a look, right? This is a zero to one or black to white. And this is also going to be in a black to white. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to blend these together and make it look convincing. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, trickery to kind of get that to work how I want it to. So let's go and add a blend node here. And I also want to go ahead and add a levels node as well. So let's take a look at the levels. The reason I want to use this levels is I want to bring these white values down just a little bit because ideally, right, these barbs are going to be kind of closer to the viewer than the actual wire is. So this is going to have to kind of reflect in our height map. So I'm going to use the white output and just bring that down maybe just a little bit, you know, to the right side of uh, halfway there. And really, we're going to play around with this more once we actually combine these together. But for now, it's going to do. So let's go and grab our auto levels down here. And I want to bring it out into a blur high quality grayscale so that we're going to just get this kind of, you know, humunculus shape here, kind of an unidentified blob. And the reason I want to use this is that first we're going to go ahead and actually subtract these values from, oh, I should select this one here, our wire here. And this is going to help us, again, just further blend these barbs onto the wire. So I'll plug that into the foreground and using the subtract blending mode, we can see that it's gone ahead and removed some of those values. Now that's a little bit too much. So let's go and bring this down to like 0 0.7. And hopefully that's going to be good enough for now. But again, we can play around with that later. So now we can go and add another blend mode to actually start to blend these together. And I'll go and drag our auto levels down here and bring that up into the foreground. Now we can go ahead and again switch our blending mode to be max lighten. And you can see now we've got our barbs kind of, you know, tiling over top and connecting with this wire piece. And again, you might have some instances where, you know, these values are very similar. So you might want to go ahead and maybe bring this down a little bit. Or you want to go ahead and back to your sharper pieces down here, maybe bring the values up a little bit. It's really going to depend on what you want to do. Actually, maybe I'll do, yeah, something like that looks pretty cool. And now because we finally have this all composited together, let's go ahead and actually give it a little bit more organicness, right? Because this is a very streamlined and while interesting and cool tileable material, it's very straight and very rigid, right? So what we can do using a directional warp node is introduce a little bit of waviness to it. So if we go ahead and draw out a Gaussian noise node, again, changing the scale way down to something like maybe four-ish, right? Very soft there. Maybe bringing our intensity up to about 25. And then let's go and bring this at 90 degrees. We can see, right? Now we're going to get a little bit of a non-uniform kind of warp to it. And we can play around with the disorder or the scale, but chances are you're probably going to want to use the disorder here to go ahead and just kind of warp things until you find something that you like. Again, you don't want it to be kind of too warpy like this, where this is really stretching out and this is really thin, but you're probably going to find something you like just by kind of sliding this along. And so if we go ahead and plug this all back into our base material, we can see that the height map is starting to look really cool.